Hi, Mickey here. MH370 The Real Scenario Part 2 is finally here. Before we start, I just want to say that if you've not seen my first video, it would be important to view it to better understand this Part 2 video. Part 1 is only 15 minutes, so please check it out. Link is in the description. We begin with a sign off to Kuala Lumpur Area Control Centre. The time is 1.19 and 30 seconds AM Malaysia local time. Malaysian 370, contact with Jimin 120, decimal 9, right. Good night, Malaysia. The captain does not go to the toilet but makes his way to the entry hatch to the underfloor electronic and equipment bay. This is only a few steps from the cockpit door. He opens the hatch and climbs down the access ladder into the bay containing the plane's avionics and electronics. The captain then walks a few steps to the P110 left power management panel and pulls three circuit breakers. This sequence occurred after the captain's final radio transmission. It could not have happened before. Pulling the three circuit breakers ensures the satellite data unit is now offline and that neither the onboard satellite phones or the internet connection are available to the cabin crew or passengers. The cabin occupants cannot now alert anyone on the ground to the situation. Additionally, by pulling the breakers in the electronic and equipment bay, no ground earth station log or GES log is generated by the aircraft's avionics that would otherwise be transmitted back to the Malaysia Airlines Control Centre for analysis. If the satellite data unit was switched off via the cockpit overhead panel, a GES log would have been created and sent. This did not happen. Also, the fact there was no GES log tells us when MH370 was taken over. The captain exits the electronic and equipment bay and returns to the cockpit. As a ploy to now get the first officer out of the cockpit, the captain advises him there may be a problem in the cabin requiring his attendance. As the first officer leaves the cockpit, the captain locks the door. From this point on, the cockpit is secured against any intrusion. The captain switches the transponder off. The captain switches the cabin pressurization off. Within one minute, the cabin emergency oxygen drop down masks deploy. Within another three minutes, the pressure in the cabin is approaching that of the outside, 35,000 feet. Within the next 15 minutes, the cabin emergency oxygen is depleted and all cabin occupants are soon incapacitated due to hypoxia or hypothermia, as the temperature in the plane is now about minus 50 degrees Celsius. At 2.25 a.m. Malaysia local time, the captain returns to the electronic and equipment bay. He resets the three circuit breakers previously pulled to ensure that the cockpit voice recorder is overwritten as the flight progresses. The captain was not aware the satellite data unit would now be back online and Inmarsat satellite would be tracking the plane after this time. North of Sumatra, MH370 arcs around Sultan Iskandar Muda International Airport in Bandar Aceh. The captain inputs the coordinate 38 degrees south latitude, 88 degrees east longitude into the flight management computer and the plane continues on a southern trajectory into the Indian Ocean toward this prescribed coordinate. MH370 arrives at 3888 just prior to fuel exhaustion. After all fuel is exhausted, MH370 begins a glide and turns to the southwest to be over the Gilving fracture zone. The plane is in daylight less than 30 minutes and could not be further east of this point as that would have meant being visible in bright sunlight for more than 90 minutes. The captain could not afford for the plane to be seen at this time. After gliding for approximately 18 minutes, the plane ditches in the southern Indian Ocean. I estimate the location of the plane to be at 39.7 degrees south latitude, 87.0 degrees east longitude in the 4,000 meter deep Gilvenk fracture zone. It would be prudent to search adjacent to this coordinate. At the point of ditching onto the ocean's surface, MH370 is ruptured but does not break up, similar to this image. If a new search is mounted close to my revised final coordinate, MH370 will be located next year, 2024. This is where MH370 is. Yeah. 